Hello, good evening. Welcome to the Library of Mythical Ireland. I'm Anthony Murphy. This is Monday evening. It's time for Live Irish Myths. This week, we are bringing you episode number 159 of Live Irish Myths. And today, we're going to pick up uh, where we left off last time with James Stevens. In fact, a totally new story, of course, but uh, that wonderful book, Irish Fairy Tales by James Stevens, first published in 1924. And we thoroughly enjoyed his uh, uh, telling of the story of the boyhood of Finn. So much so that we said, absolutely, let's go back to that story. Sorry, just cleaning my glasses. Hope everybody's keeping well and safe and all that. If you are watching, we are streaming live on the Mythical Ireland YouTube channel. That's youtube.com forward slash Mythical Ireland. We are also simultaneously streaming on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Mythical Ireland. If somebody is about who could share the stream from the main Mythical Ireland Facebook page onto the Mythical Ireland community, that would be wonderful. For some reason, uh, Melon App is not allowing me to stream directly onto uh, the Mythical Ireland community. You think I'd clean the glasses before I started, for goodness sake. <sighs> Susan Long is in the house from Iowa in the United States. Good afternoon to all the Iowans. Susan, you're very welcome to the live stream. Jason is in Dale Hollow Lake, patiently awaiting his calendar. Good stuff. The Irish and uh, Northern Irish uh, calendars all went out in the post today. The pre-orders, that is. And I am about, I hope, about halfway through the international orders as we speak. So, uh, Hope they all get there soon when they leave here. Uh, e. Humberdusi, who is uh, Erica, is in foggy Ipswich town in Suffolk. Yeah, you can keep that right over there, Erica. We don't want any fog. <laughs> I hope you're keeping well. Mandy McCurl is in the house. Hope you're keeping well. Re re greetings from the Isle of Mull. Some letters missing on your keypad there, perhaps, Mandy, but you're very welcome. And uh, hello again. Yes, some stuck keys, maybe. Janet Moran is in the house. Hello, Janet. Fáilte, gudí on scéal seo. Agus, see sheas and make yourself a cup of tea and all the rest. Make yourself comfortable. Kathy May Dayo says, I get to be here for the full episode. Took the day off. Vacation day. Glad to be here. Hope you're doing well. Mr. Anthony on the tour. Doing absolutely fine, Kathy. Long day. Long day. I'm on the go since 8 o'clock this morning. Working. Uh, but, I mean, apart from that, it's a good complaint to be able to do it, isn't it? Archaeostronomy Database, who's Ty, says, Hello, friends. Lunar eclipse coming up for some areas at next full moon. Yes, indeed. Apparently, we're just going to see a penumbral phase as the moon sets. We are not going to get to see the full eclipse, which I think you have to be in America to see. Hope you enjoy that. Yvette Tillema is uh, in the house. Good evening, Yvette. Good to see you. I hope life is treating you well. Brendan Byrne is in Glen the Loch, Glan. Glen Dalucha, where we have an explosion of colour. Oh, I can imagine what that's like right now. Yes, indeed. Oh, those colours on the leaves. Anne Scott Doherty says she's front and centre and waiting for a good story. Hello, Anne. Well, I hope we can live up to that billing. Um, still sucking is sweet. It'll be gone soon. I do apologise. Steve Martinson is in the house saying hello to everybody who's gathered here today. Hello, Steve. Fáilte. Good on Lowerlin show. Bannock the All from Laguna Beach, California. That's Tarini Pendle Pendleton. Hello, Tarini. Michelle Terrell is watching from the mountains of Colorado. Sounds nice. Sounds very nice. Uh, who Gadarn is in Low I I Isle I, I, of Sorry, Isle of Wight. Thank you. Very good. I hope the weather is nice there. It's a bit more sort of it tends to be a bit more tropical there, doesn't it, than in, in uh more northerly parts. Um, <laughs> Mandy, you were having a moment there with the keyboard. Look, it happens to the best of us, you know. NLP, mind, body, soul. Lisa, who is in Ipswich too. Hello, Lisa, in Ipswich. Fáilte, goodie, on Lowerland Show, August. Uh, 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 it's, it's, I can't even speak it. I wanted to say, I hope that you have something nice in the way of a cup of tea or a brew or a dram or something, you know. Sorry, my uh, text message, which I 
can't answer right now. Giant Oak is in Kilkenny. Hello, Giant Oak from Acorns, Tiny Acorns and all of that. Grow. Good evening from down the road in Balia Brigine, says Peter Okanaja. Peter Kennedy, it's good to see you in the house. Catherine Woodruff is in Chile, Wisconsin. It's not chilly here. In fact, it's balmy. Yesterday, I did say that in the stream last night, didn't I? Yeah. Yesterday, John Henge has reappeared. I shared those pictures with the patrons. That's uh, patreon.com forward slash mythical Ireland. That one there. Uh, the thermometer in the car yesterday afternoon said 16 Celsius. It is balmy for the time of year. And it's apparently going to be a mild week here in Ireland. No sign of the winter frosts just yet. They're a bit late this year, but we don't mind that. Pilar Goldstein Day says, Yeriv, Gies Murugic, Pilar, hope you are well. Is it Pilar or Pilar? I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing. Gary is the full Irish. I presume he likes his breakfasts. <laughs> oh, never mind. Uh, is, uh, Gary is in Tala in South Dublin, always watching the streams. Tom King is in the house. Good evening, Anthony of the Mighty Toa. Beautiful, mild evening in the Boyne Valley. Hope all good. In good fettle and ready for story time. Yes, indeed, Tom. Uh, uh, certainly I am in good form and hope you're likewise. Nula Doyle, good to see you, by the way. Nula Doyle is in the house. Hello, Nula. Welcome. Fault you. Fault you, Stock Marge. He's smiling and waving. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Marge. Hello, Anthony. All and all the two of us, says Helena. Hello, Helena Breen. John Main is in Bell Mullet in the county of the U Tree. Yes, County Mayo. In case you didn't know, way out west. John, hope things are well with you. Lillian Cruz is in Rio in Brazil. Hello, Lillian. Good afternoon to all our friends in South America. Wonderful to see you. Desiree Riley's. Uh, this suite will be finished in a moment. Uh, uh, and all the to work here. To work, I'm here. And all the. Hello. I can't make sense of that. Sorry, Desiree. I take it you're in Grand Junction. Just leaving the dog park. Brilliant stuff. Hope the dogs are in good form. And I uh, hope you are likewise in good form. It is always a pleasure to see you and your unpronounceable name. Only because I don't know how to pronounce it. Not because everyone else called you Desiree. Uh, Ria Uleri is sending green hearts. Well, there you go. Green hearts right back at you. Who Gadarn says it's like summer, lol. Yeah, I'd say it's like summer in the Isle of Wight. If it's warm here, I'd say it's warmer there. Lots of rain and wind in, Wa in Newcastle, Washington State, says Kathy May. No power for eight hours yesterday. Hopefully not today. So snuggled up on the dofe on this rainy day to hear some stories. Brilliant. Yeah. You know, when the power cuts, there's only one thing to do is light a candle and grab a book. Some people might say grab a bottle of wine, but that's not necessary. That's optional. Paul Campbell is in Galway on the West Coast. Hello, Paul. Sandrine Brady Bonsoir from Orléans in France. Hope you're doing well. I haven't been able to catch the episode live for a long time. Glad to be back this evening. It's a great pleasure to have you along, Sandrine. Thank you for joining us. Barbara Murphy is uh, glad that she made it. <laughs> Yay. It's like celebrate. Yes, we're here. Uh, always good to have another Murphy in the house. Mark Gordon, uh, who I believe is in Iowa. Is that right, Mark? Says uh, good day, everyone. Angel, Angel Barboni is in the house. Hello, Angel. Welcome back. Hope you are well. Who else? Royal Hill Tara Ranger is just back down from Moat Hill in Avon. Well, good evening to you, Paul. Hope life is treating you well. I'm, I was waiting for the first frost to break down the snow for the Christmas snow gin, but still waiting. <laughs> it's keeping you keeping you on your toes. You have to be watching. Trina New York is in the house. Falchit Trina. Connors and Tatu. Cain Queen of Wilshiv, says Nora. Water is freezing, but lovely in the sunshine today. Yeah, I'd, I'd definitely stay in the air. I'd stay out of the water. That would be my choice now. <laughs> you know, if somebody said, are you going for a swim? I'd be like, am I what? No, I definitely not. <laughs> okay. Uh, ah, Desiree, it's okay. Don't listen, don't be apologizing. A few people having keyboard problems this evening. That should have read hello to Anthony and all the two. I'm here in Grand Junction, just leaving the dog park. My speech to text does not like my accent. <laughs> you should you should put the captions on on the YouTube replays of the live streams. <laughs> YouTube thinks I say some hilariously funny things, <laughs> which I don't. Definitely not. Anyway, 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 in case you missed it. Yes, 
I'm not. The camera is is framed in such a way as that you can see me and the the tidy bookshelves. What you can't see all around me are the boxes with envelopes and calendars and uh, you know uh, the peel offs from the peel offs from the envelopes. You know. Um, and the address labels and the cutting and the scissors and the tape and all of that. I have been a busy, busy bee. We have been busy bees here in mythical Ireland because I can't reach it. <laughs> it's like, oh God, don't tell me I have to get up off the chair. It's like back in those days when I was a kid, when there was no such thing as remote controls. If you wanted to change the channel on the TV, you had to get up off your chair and press a button or twist a knob. <laughs> No, I'm still not getting up off the chair. Yes, the 2022 Mythical Ireland calendars arrived from the printers and the first of the pre-orders, all of those for Ireland and Northern Ireland, uh, went out in today's post. All going well. Some of you will get them tomorrow. Uh, please feel free to share your photographs of them hanging in their new places, pr proudly hanging in your home. Don't forget, when the year is over, when 2020 is over, you can hang it uh, back to front and show off all those other little thumbnail pictures on the back. Anyway, uh, there are plenty of calendars. Don't worry. If you want to order one, just go to the website. It's mythicalireland.com and uh, go to the gallery and shop. And in the drop down, select calendar. Make sure you choose the 2022 calendar, not the 2021 calendar. Ah, OK, it's peel, peeler, peeler, pe peeler, peeler. Okay, sounds like I kind of got it half right. Mariana Dunn is checking in late. That's okay. We haven't started the story yet, Mariana. Make yourself comfortable. Plenty of time to grab a cup of tea. I don't have a cup of tea. I just have my usual glass of boiling water. Mm. Yeah, thank you very much. That's the story. Uh, so... Uh, Yes, good. Um, did I want to say anything else? Yeah, just in case you missed it, there's a there's a very interesting post on Patreon today, and also sent out to the mailing list, uh, which pertains to a an idea uh, to uh, release my next book, the one I'm currently writing, to release this page by page for patrons, as it is being written. Uh, 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 as a way to uh, give the patron something extra and to uh, help support my writing endeavours. So uh, hopefully uh, that uh, if you got an email or if you're a patron, uh, please feel free to respond. Make your opinion known. It would be very welcome. Anyway, at 13 minutes past the hour, 14 minutes now, uh, we are going to read from the wonderful... Irish Fairy Tales by James Stevens. This is a facsimile reprint. Uh, one of the Tua recently uh, got his hands on an original hardback copy in a case uh, in the old bookshop on the Hill of Tara. What a wonderful uh, 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 little present that was. Um, so he, he, he was, I hope, delighted. James Stevens we encountered before we read the boyhood of fionn in three episodes uh, and the story of toan mccarroll uh, and we are going to continue because we have enjoyed stevens's writing so much it's been brilliant you know sir shanley handel connor satatu who is this ei2kc i but who is the, what sounds like r2d2 you know um yes indeed so uh tonight we are going to read the entirety of the birth of bran hopefully you'll enjoy it are we all comfortable all sitting down uh, i'm sorry i'm just going to remove that um among other things there's a balloon under the desk don't ask well you can ask doesn't mean you're getting an answer <sighs> yes, some jokes maybe later. <laughs> Chapter one. Is everybody comfortable and warm and snug? And has everybody got something to drink? Is the question. And that might be water. That might be milk. Almond milk, perhaps. 
that might be a, a 12 year old scotch whiskey or a bourbon that might be a glass of wine that might be a can of guinness that might be a bit of putcheen i don't know but i hope that you have something anyway Nora says she's ready to go. Tay in hand. Good stuff. Chapter one. There are people who do not like dogs a bit. They are usually women. That was sexist. But in this story, there is a man who did not like dogs. Mavanway is eating dinner. And Janet Moran is uh, having sparkling, sparkling ice. She's far from mint tea. I was rare done. Nice one. Pass that. Oh, no, don't, because there's a pandemic. Damn. Helena wants to know where the rum is. <laughs> uh, anyway, there are people who do not like dogs a bit. They're usually women. But in this story, there is a man who did not like dogs. In fact, he hated them. When he saw one, he used to go black in the face, and he threw rocks at it until it got out of sight. But the power that protects all creatures had put a squint into this man's eye so that he always threw crooked <laughs> not to mention that he looked crooked as well mavanway watched the uh, ghost stories episode on catch-up and says that it was bloody terrifying distorted voice what was that all about that was just about me having uh i'm terribly sorry to announce that there is a quite a prosaic explanation for that uh, that was uh, due to a poor internet connection on this side which caused um, the sound and sometimes the video to lag a little bit uh, and for distortions to appear in my voice. That's what I'm saying. And that's the official story and I'm sticking to it. The alternative is that there was somebody here with me Ooh, in spirit. Only spirit that is usually here with me is whiskey. Ah, uh, never mind. Hot chocolate with booze, says Mandy. Mandy, I really like your drinks. I'm just saying that. I really do. Daisy Peters is in the house. You think you can sneak in late, unannounced? <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. This gentleman's name was Fergus Fionlia, and his stronghold was near the harbour of Galway, close to where Paul Campbell lives. It doesn't say that. Obviously, Paul Campbell is one of our two. Uh, Whenever a dog barked, he would leap out of his seat and he would throw everything that he owned out of the window in the direction of the bark. He gave prizes to servants who disliked dogs and when he heard that a man had drowned a litter of pups, he used to visit that person and try to marry his daughter. Not very pleasant really, is he? Now Fionn, the son of Owl, was the reverse of Fergus, uh, of Fergus Fionlia in this matter, for he delighted in dogs. And he knew everything about them from the setting of the first little white tooth to the rocking of the last long yellow one. He knew the affections and antipathies which are proper in a dog, the degree of obedience to which dogs may be trained without losing their honourable qualities or becoming servile and suspicious. He knew the hopes that an animate them, the apprehensions which tingle in their blood. And all that is to be demanded from or forgiven in a paw, an ear, a nose, an eye or a tooth. And he understood these things because he loved dogs. For it is by love alone that we understand anything. Among the 300 dogs which Fionn owned, there were two to whom he gave especial tenderness and who were, were his daily and nightly companions. These two were Bran and Skjolum, but if a person were to guess for 20 years, he would not find out why Fionn lo loved these two dogs and why he would never be separated from them. Elaine Cooney is in the house. Hello there, Elaine. Falcha. Welcome in. Falcha Shock. Make yourself comfortable. The people, the folks have been describing what they're drinking as they're watching the episode. Um, uh, Mandy McCurls was the most interesting. She said she was having hot chocolate with booze. Ah, yes. Looking forward to the day when I get to visit Mandy's place 
and we'll do an episode from Mandy's place. And I'm going to share some of her exotic uh, liquor. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, that'll be fun. Um, Mon the puppies. <laughs> Fionn's mother, Murnia, went to Wide Allen of Leinster to visit her son. And she brought her young sister, Turin, with her. The mother and aunt of the great captain were well treated among the Fianna. First, because they were parents to Fionn, and second, because they were beautiful and noble women. No words can describe how delightful Murna was. She took the branch, and as to Turin, a man could not look at her without becoming angry or dejected. Her face was fresh as a spring morning, her voice more cheerful than the cuckoo calling from the branch that is highest in the hedge. And her form swayed like a reed and flowed like a river, so that each person thought she would surely flow to him. Men who had wives of their own grew moody and downcast because they could not hope to marry her, while the bachelors of the Fianna stared at each other with truculent bloodshot eyes, and then they gazed on Turin so gently that she may have imagined she was being beamed on by the mild eyes of the dawn. Very romantic uh, writing altogether. It was to an Ulster gentleman, Yolan Achtach, that she gave her love. And this chief stated his rights and qualities and asked for her in marriage. Now, Fionn did not dislike the men of Ulster, but either he did not know them well or else he knew them too well, for he made a curious stipulation before consenting to the marriage. Absolutely, Mandy. Tell you, can't wait for the day. Be good, good fun. He bound Yolon to return the lady if there should be occasion to think her unhappy. And Yolon agreed to do so. The sureties to this bargain were Kailcha MacRonan, Gol MacMorna, and Louis. Louis himself gave the bride away, but it was not a pleasant ceremony for him because he also was in love with the lady and he would have preferred keeping her to giving her away. When she had gone, he made a poem about her, beginning, There is no more light in the sky. And hundreds of sad people learned the poem by heart. <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? And they're all going around reciting a poem that begins, there is no more light in the sky because the woman of their dreams has gone and gotten married to someone else. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> and Nora Gaffney, uh, bloodshot eyes, very romantic, not the night after, the day before, the day after, the night before even. Rowan Grove thinks that she's going to slip in unannounced. Not quite. Come to the front of the class and pay special attention. You have missed chapter one. You will have to listen to it on replay. Uh, good evening, Rowan. Welcome to the live stream. It's great to see you. <laughs> I love embarrassing the latecomers. <laughs> it's great fun. <laughs> Sorry, I'm deriving far too much pleasure from that. I'll shut up now. Chapter two. When Yolon and Turin were married, they went to Ulster, and they lived together very happily. But the law of life is change. Nothing continues in the same way for any length of time. Happiness must become unhappiness and will be succeeded again by joy, the joy it had displaced. The past must also be reckoned with. It is seldom as far behind us as we could wish. It is more often in front, blocking the way, and the future trips over it just when we think that the road is clear and joy our own. Yolon had a past. He was not ashamed of it. He merely thought it was finished, although in truth it was only beginning, for it is that perpetual beginning of the past that we call the future. <laughs> Oh, Stevens is very inventive. Janelle Sok Sokeda, or however you pronounce your name. How dare you? <laughs> I'm only joking. 
but yes, uh, you see, there's a thing about slipping in quietly to a lesson or a, a live stream, and that is not to announce that you're slipping in. Because if you want to slip in quietly, do not bring it to the attention of the lecturer <laughs> who will call you out in front of all your fellow pupils. Stay behind uh, detention afterwards so that you can go back to the beginning and learn the first two chapters. No, you're very welcome, honestly. <laughs> <sighs> Sorry. <clears throat> Before he joined the Fianna, he had been in love with a lady of the she named Ucht Jalov, which means fair breast. And they had been sweethearts for years. How often he had visited his sweetheart in fairy. With what eagerness and anticipation he had gone there. The lover's whistle that he used to give was known to every person in that she. And he had been discussed by more than one of the delicate sweet ladies of fairy. That is your whistle, fair breast, her sister of the she would say. And Ucht Jalov would reply, Yes, that is my mortal, my lover, my pulse, and my one treasure. Oh, some mills and boom stuff going on here. Ah, so thoroughly romantic, it's good for the heart, isn't it? Oh, I love a good love story. She laid her spinning aside, or her embroidery if she was at that, or if she were baking a cake of fine wheaten bread, no uh, gender stereotyping going on here at all. The woman is spinning or embroidering or making bread. Mixed with honey, she would leave the cake to bake itself and fly to Yulum. Then they went hand in hand to the country that smells of assel... assel. <laughs> I'll, I'll try that again. I do apologise. And I haven't had a drop of Mandy's hot chocolate with booze. I haven't had a drop. Then they went hand in hand to the country that smells of apple blossom and honey, looking on heavy bowed trees and on dancing and beaming clouds. Or they stood dreaming together, locked in a clasping of arms and eyes, gazing up and down on each other, Yolan staring down into sweet grey wells that peeped and flickered under thin brows, and Ucht Jalov looking up into great black ones that went dreamy and went hot in endless alternation. I guess they, uh, I guess they liked each other. Janet Moran is, is, is loving this. I'm glad to hear it. Good stuff. Which part? Um, excuse me. Peter Woods is in the house. Janelle accepts the consequences. Uh, 100 lines. I must not be late for class. <laughs> uh, it's perfectly all right. Just sit down and make yourself comfortable. Make That's the main thing. Janet, Janet thinks it's lucky for me that... Lucky for... Oh, lucky for you that I haven't had a drop. Yeah, could you imagine what I'd be like? <laughs> then Yolan would go back to the world of men and Ucht Jalov would return to her occupations in the land of the ever young. Tierna Nog. <laughs> Brendan Byrne is wondering if a different Antony slipped in through the portal last week. <laughs> uh, no. Leaving your F lover for someone else never ends well. Never a truer word was spoken, Rowan. I wouldn't do it. Oh, it's freezing and breaking up for Barbara. Oh dear. Not my fault as well. <laughs> so, so say that. I blame my husband. My last name was way easier. Rice. But he insisted that I take his. <laughs> ah, brilliant, brilliant. Uh, yes, Desira, you're absolutely right. It's the I'm delirious because I'm just you know I'm I'm I'm, I'm 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 terrible, terribly tired after all those all that label writing. Okay, Mavanwa has issued a challenge, which is, can he tell a bad joke? We can determine the real Anthony by the jokes, I reckon. Okay. How was the Roman Empire divided in two? With a pair of Caesars. 
it's definitely me. You have to admit, it's definitely me. What did he say? Her sister of the she would ask. He said I was the berry of the mountain, the star of knowledge and the blossom of the raspberry. They always say the same thing, her sister pouted. But they look other things, Ucht Jalov insisted. They feel other things, she murmured, and an endless conversation recommenced. Then for some time, Yolan did not come to fairy, and Ucht Jalov marvelled at that, while her sister made an, an hundred surmises, each one worse than the last. Excuse me. Say, yes. So, Mavanway agrees. No change. <laughs> Peter's, you're high from uh, licking the glue on the envelope. No, it's a pandemic. You're self sealing envelopes. <laughs> uh, pair of Caesars. That was bad. Bad enough, even in Latin. <laughs> ah, yes. So, um, Anthony channeling a great book. Uh, who was who has it said that? Helena. Yes, absolutely. And a happy birthday to Daisy's mum, Daisy Peters's mum. It's her birthday today. Happy birthday to you from all of us on the Mythical Ireland Live Irish Myths live stream. Brilliant. Every morning, I announce loudly to my family that I'm going jogging, but then I don't go. It's something of a running joke. <laughs> I apologise. <laughs> I'm the one that's going to be doing detention and writing lines. I must not tell bad jokes in class. He is not dead. Or, or he would be here, she said. He has forgotten you, my darling. News was brought to Chirnanog of the marriage of Yolan and Turin. And when Ucht Jalob heard that news that news her heart ceased to beat for a moment and she closed her eyes now said her sister of the she that is how long the love of a mortal lasts she added in the voice of sad triumph which is proper to sisters <laughs> it's him all right yeah there was a funny one the other day uh, somebody was talking about a, a, a tennis player uh, that he had a fancy to and i said never get romantically involved with tennis players love means nothing to them okay i promise that's the last one no more jokes tonight no more jokes tonight <laughs> excuse me the people who are re-watching this like want the story and they're fed up of all these interjections i'm sure michael pike is in the house Hello there, Michael. Lillian wants to know, why were the med medieval times also called the Dark Ages? I don't know, because they were full of knights? <laughs> uh, never mind. Uh, but on Ucht Jalov, there came a rage of jealousy and despair such as no person in the she had ever heard of. And from that moment, she became capable of every ill deed. For there are two things not easily controlled, and they are hunger and jealousy. Yeah, it was right, because there were so many nights. <laughs> ah, yes, brilliant. Uh, <clears throat> yes. Where did they go to socialise? Was it a nightclub? <laughs> I love nightclubs. Beer, cocktails and jousting. <laughs> she determined that the woman who had supplanted her in Yolon's affections should rue the day she did it. She pondered and brooded revenge in her heart, sitting in thoughtful solitude and bitter collectedness, until at last she had a plan. She understood the arts of magic and shape-changing, so she changed her shape into that of Fionn's female runner, the best-known woman in Ireland. Then she set out from fairy and appeared in the world. She travelled in the direction of Yolon stronghold. Sirshani <laughs> Candle, you should definitely not encourage me. <laughs> Love means nothing to tennis players. Uh, it's terrible. <laughs> Tom King needs a drink. Can't blame you. Tender was the night, said the dragon, <laughs> as he gulped down. Yes, as he gulped him down. Yes, indeed. Yolan knew the appearance of Fionn's messenger. 
but he was surprised to see her. She saluted him. Health and long life, my master. Health and good days, he replied. What brings you here, dear heart? I come from Fionn. And your message, said he. The royal captain intends to visit you. He will be welcome, said Yolan. We shall give him an Ulster feast. The world knows what that is, said the messenger courteously. And now, she continued, I have messages for your queen. Turin then walked from the house with the messenger. But when they had gone a short distance, Ucht Jalov drew a hazel rod from beneath her cloak and struck it on the queen's shoulder. And on the instant, Turin's figure trembled and quivered, and it began to whirl inwards and downwards, and she changed into the appearance of a hound. It was sad to see the beautiful slender dog standing, shivering and astonished, and sad to see the lovely eyes that looked out pitifully in terror and amazement. But Ucht Jalov did not feel sad. She clasped a chain about the hound's neck, and they set off westward towards the house of Fergus Fionlia, who was reputed to be the unfriendliest man in the world to a dog. It was, it was because of his reputation that Ucht Jalov was bringing the hound to him. She did not want a good home for this dog. She wanted the worst home that could be found in the world. And she thought that Fergus would revenge her for the rage and jealousy that she felt towards Turin. What do they say, ladies? Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. And I ain't going to be the one to scorn you. <laughs> this is probably where people get the idea that leprechauns whack people with their shillelagh sticks. <laughs> uh, brilliant. Daisy Peter says, our nightclub is right here. Absolutely. Boogie on down. What are we dancing to tonight? Um, I would play some music except for YouTube will give me a copyright ban. Um, mine is like a mixture of uh, 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 early U2, uh, Dire Straits, um and a little bit of jean michel jarre for a bit of weirdness hope you got your juice tom king chapter three as they paced along ucht jalov railed bitterly against the hound and shook and jerked her chain many a sharp cry the hound gave in that journey Jur journey journey many a mild lament ah supplanter ah taker of another girl's sweetheart said ucht jalov fiercely how would your lover take it if he could see you now how would he look if he saw your pointy ears your long thin snout your shivering skinny legs and your long gray tail he would not love you now, bad girl. Have you heard of Fergus Fionlia? She said again. The man who does not like dogs. Turin had indeed heard of him. Uh, there is, uh, yes, I wouldn't be completely now, you know, uh, the old triangle and all that and... Uh, and I went home on a Monday night, as drunk as drunk could be. What is it? I saw a hat, or I saw a coat, where my coat should be, and all of that. Uh, uh, seven, what's that called? Seven Drunken Nights? Yeah, I like that song. Rip-roaringly brilliant. Excuse me, I need to cough. <coughs> I also need to take a drink. I also need to take it easy with the stupid jokes. <laughs> Koda is very silent tonight, Desiree. Of course, as soon as we say that, he will start barking his head off. Um, did druids use wands like hazel wands or other trees to conduct spells or magic for their people? We may suggest that they did, because that's not the first mention of a wand in a story. In fact, the story of the black pig uh, says that a uh, school headmaster uh, had the ability to turn children into uh, animals, which he did during their playtime, and they'd go home exhausted turn them back into human children again before they went home. Excuse me. <coughs> but um, uh, after a while, the parents got mad and they were like, why are our kids coming home exhausted? And the kids told them what was happening. And so the parents encouraged the kids to 
to do the opposite, to tell the teacher to turn himself into something. And the teacher tapped himself on the head with his magic wand and turned himself into a pig. But he forgot that pigs don't have fingers, they have cloven hooves. So he wasn't able to pick the wand up and tap him on the, himself on the head and turn himself back into a, a human. Uh, and uh, the fork of white hazel, not distinctly a wand, but the fork of white hazel is brandished by Elkmar at Knuck Sheed and Broga at Newgrange in Tuchmark Etain, the wing of Etain. It's called Seven Drunken Nights, but they only describe five, I believe. Yeah, that may be so. Horse lips. Yes, indeed. Not my thing, but that's not because I don't like them. It's just I wasn't really sort of subjected to their music when I was younger, you know. Oh, I like Queen as well. Bit of, can't beat a bit of Freddy. It is to Fergus I shall bring you, cried Ucht Jalov. He will throw stones at you. You have never heard a stone... You have never had a stone thrown at you. Ah, bad girl. You do not know how a stone sounds as it nips the ear with a whirling buzz, nor how jagged and heavy it feels as it thumps against a skinny leg. Robber, mortal, bad girl. You have never been whipped, but you will be whipped now. You shall hear the song of a lash as it curls forward and bites inward and drags backward. You shall dig up old bones stealthily at night and chew them against famine. You shall whine and squeal at the moon and shiver in the cold, and you will never take another girl's sweetheart again. Hoo -hoo. Definitely not. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Definitely not. Yeah, Brendan, exactly. A fork of white hazel as used in divining. Uh, I talk about that at some length in my Mythical Ireland book. Uh, I'm fascinated by that. Absolutely fascinated. In fact, I, you know, I call Elkmar a diviner, not just of water, but of, of souls, you know. Barb, Jordan is in the house. Hello, Barb. Welcome along. Hope you are well. And it was in those terms that, and in that tone that she spoke to Tyrion as they journeyed forward, so that the hound trembled and shrank and whined pitifully and in despair. They came to Fergus Fionlia's stronghold, and Ucht Jalov demanded admittance. Leave that dog outside, said the servant. I will not do so, said the pretended messenger. You can come in without the dog, or you can stay out with the dog, said the surly guardian. By my hand, cried Ucht Jalov, I will come in with this dog, or your master shall answer for it to Fion. As the name of Fion, Sorry, at the name of Fionn, the servant almost fell out of his standing. He flew to acquaint his master, and Fergus himself came to the great door of the stronghold. Uh, John Main says that the two other knights were censored. Are we talking about the knights as in the seven knights, the seven drunken knights? Or are we still talking about medieval knights here and nightclubs? I, I know, I, I, I imagine which two you're talking about. I think Coda is hiding from all these bad dog people, says Barbara. Probably. Possibly, yes. By my faith, he cried in amazement, it is a dog. A dog it is, growled the glum servant. Go you away, said Fergus to Ucht Jalof, and when you have killed the dog, come back to me and I will give you a present. Life and health, my good master, from Fionn, the son of Ul, the son of Bashkne said she to Fergus. Life and health back to Fionn, he replied. Come into the house and give me your message, but leave the dog outside, for I don't like dogs. The dog comes in, the messenger replied. How is that? cried Fergus angrily. Fionn sends you this hound to take care of until he comes for her, said the messenger. I wonder at that, Fergus growled. For Fionn knows well that there is not a man in the world who has less of a liking for dogs than I have. I know this one. Lillian Cruz. Who designed King Arthur's round table? Would that be circumference? <laughs> oh, sorry. I should. I'm not going to steal your thunder anymore. You have your jokes in the comments. I'm, I'm going to shut up. And when I mean I'm going to read the story. 
<laughs> circumference. <laughs> I've heard all the worst ones, so uh, unless you've got a good joke, you probably won't be able to outdo me. <laughs> However that may be, Master, I have given Fionn's message, and here at my heel is the dog. Do you take her or refuse her? If I could refuse anything to Fionn, it would be the dog, said Fergus, but I could not refuse anything to Fionn, so give me the hound. Ucht Jalov put the chain in his hand. Ah, bad dog, said she. And then she went away, well satisfied with her revenge, and returned to her own people in the she. Let me see how many pages I have left. What time are we on? Ah, we're flying. We're in the show. We're nearly there already, for God's sake. Then sure next week we'll do we'll we'll uh, we'll read Ushin's mother. Oh brilliant. There's loads to go. Brilliant. Ah yes. Lillian Cruz, I promise. Uh, you 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 have the floor for the next joke. I will not interrupt, even if I know it. I promise. Chapter four. On the following day, Fergus called his servant. Has that dog stopped shivering yet? he asked. It has not, sir, said the servant. Bring the beast here, said his master, for whoever else is dissatisfied, Fionn must be satisfied. The dog was brought, and he examined it with a jaundiced and bitter eye. It has the shivers indeed, he said. The shivers it has, said the servant. How do you cure the shivers, his master demanded, for he thought that if the animal's legs dropped off, Fionn would not be satisfied. There is a way, said the servant, doubtfully. If there is a way, tell it to me, cried his master angrily. If you were to take the beast up in your arms and hug it and kiss it, the shivers would stop, said the man. Do you mean, his master thundered and he stretched his hand for a club. I heard that, said the servant humbly. Take that dog up, Fergus commanded, and hug it and kiss it. And if I find a single shiver left in the beast, I'll break your head. Wow, that's uh, one way to keep your servants in check. The man bent to the hound, but it snapped a piece out of his hand and nearly bit his nose off as well. <laughs> that dog doesn't like me, said the man. Nor do I, roared Fergus. Get out of my sight. The man went away and Fergus was left alone with the hound. But the poor creature was so terrified that it began to tremble ten times worse than before. Its legs will drop off, said Fergus. Fionn will blame me, he cried in despair. He walked to the hound. If you snap at my nose, or if you put as much as the start of a tooth into the beginning of a finger, he growled. He picked up the dog, but it did not snap. It only trembled. He held it gingerly for a few moments. If it has to be hugged, he said, I'll hug it. I'd do more than that for Fionn. He tucked and tightened the animal into his breast and marched moodily up and down the room. The dog's nose lay along his breast under his chin and as he gave it dutiful hugs, one hug to every five paces, <laughs> very precisely measured out, the dog put out its tongue and lick, licked him timidly under the chin. Stop, roared Fergus. Stop that forever, said he. And he grew very red in the face and stared truculently down along his nose. A soft brown eye looked up at him and the shy tongue touched again on his chin. If it has to be kissed, said Fergus gloomily, I'll kiss it. I'll do more than that for Fionn, he groaned. He bent his head and shut his eyes and brought the, jo the dog's jaw against his lips. 
And at that, the dog gave little wriggles in his arms and little barks and little licks so that he could scarcely hold her. He put the hound down at last. As in, he put her on the ground, not the other kind of put her down. <laughs> Excuse me. There is not a single shiver left in her, he said. And that was true. Everywhere he walked, the dog followed him, giving little prances and little pats against him and keeping her eyes fixed on his with such eagerness and intelligence that he marvelled. That dog likes me, he murmured in amazement. By my hand, he cried next day. I like that dog. The day after that, he was calling her my one treasure, my little branch. And within a week, he could not bear her to be out of his sight for an instant. He was tormented by the idea that some evil person might throw a stone at the hound. So he assembled his servants and retainers and addressed them. Excuse me. He told them that the hound was the queen of creatures, the pulse of his heart and the apple of his eye. And he warned them that the person who as much as looked sideways on her or knocked one shiver out of her would answer for the deed with pains and indignities. He recited a list of calamities which would befall such a miscreant. And these woes began with flaying and ended with dismemberment and had inside bits of such complicated and ingenious torment that the blood of the men who heard it ran chill in their veins and the women of the household fainted where they stood. Again, no gender stereotyping going on in this story, none whatsoever. Me thinks the women would be less likely to faint than the men. Desiree, I'm of the opinion that the only people that don't like dogs are people that haven't had one in their arms. There you go. Yeah, brilliant. No one can resist sweet puppy kisses. Oh, what was the one? It was a lovely picture the other day. It was a meme. And there was something about angels being sent down sometimes in the form of, you know, cute creatures. And it was like a little black puppy with the sweetest eyes, you know. Ah, the dog is winning over the old grump, says Desiree. Yes, exactly. We're on to chapter five, which is the last chapter of the story. It's a little bit of a short one, but look, it's a, it's part of the, look, that's how much through the book we are. We've read this much and we have this much to go. Yay. Hooray for lots of stuff to read. Sounds like Ramsay Bolton in Game of Thrones. Haven't seen great Game of Thrones. Don't, haven't watched it. Sorry. I wonder. Am I going to be the only one? In course of time, the news came to Fionn that his mother's sister was not living with Yolam. He had once sent a messenger calling for fulfilment of the pledge that had been given to the Fianna and demanding for instant return of Turin. Yolan was in a sad condition when this demand was made. He guessed that Ucht Jalov had a hand in the disappearance of his queen and he begged that time should be given him in which to find the lost girl. He promised if he could not discover her within a certain period that he would deliver his body into Fionn's hands and would abide by whatever judgment Fionn might pronounce. The great captain agreed to that. Tell the wife loser that I will have the girl or I will have his head, said Fionn. Yolan set out then for fairy. He knew the way and in no great time he came to the hill where Ucht Jalov was. It was hard to get Ucht Jalov to meet him, but at last she consented, and they met under the apple boughs of fairy. Well, said Ucht Jalov, 
Ah, breaker of vows and traitor to love, said she. Hail and a blessing, said Yolam humbly. By my hand. There you go. A few people haven't seen it. Great. Barbara. Another Murphy has never seen it. Uh, Rowan Grove has never watched GOT. Angel only watched it last year. I'm beginning to feel more normal now. NLP, Mind, Body, Soul. I've never seen Game of Thrones neither, either watched TV for many decades. Well, I've watched a bit of TV, but not much. Don't have time for it, to be honest. Uh, Brendan Burns said, oh no, the F word. We have used the F word on several occasions tonight, Brendan. Please pay attention. That is like the probably the 17th time. <laughs> like, oh no, not the 17th time. <laughs> 16 is okay. But when you get to 17, that's when the... Uh, <coughs> That's when the feed starts to break up. By my hand, she cried, I will give you no blessing, for it was no blessing you left with me when we parted. I am in danger, said Yolan. What is that to me? She replied fiercely. Fionn may claim my head, he murmured. Let him claim what he can take, said she. No, said Yolan proudly. He will claim what I can give. Tell me your tale, she said coldly. Yolan told his story then, and he concluded, I am certain that you have hidden the girl. If I save your head from Fionn, the woman of the she replied, then your head will belong to me. That is true, said Yolan. And if your head is mine, the body that goes under it is mine. Do you agree to that? I do, said Yolan. I do. It's hardly like a marriage vow, is it? <laughs> Give me your pledge, said Uch Jalov. No, she didn't say it like that because she doesn't sound like a grovelly old man. Give, give me your pledge, said Uch Jalov, that if I save you from this danger, you will keep me as your sweetheart until the end of life and time. Da, da, da. <laughs> I give that pledge, <laughs> said Yolan. <clears throat> Ucht Jalov went then to the house of Fergus Fionlia, and she broke the enchantment that was on the hound so that Turin's own shape came back to her. But in the matter of two small whelps to which the hound had given birth, the enchantment could not be broken, so they had to remain as they were. These two whelps were Bran and Skjolan. They were sent to Fionn, and he loved them forever after, for they were loyal and affectionate as only dogs can be, and they were as, as intelligent as human beings. Besides that, they were Fionn's own cousins. Turin was then asked in marriage by Louis, who had loved her so long. He had to prove to her that he was not any other woman's sweetheart, and when he proved that they were married, and they lived happily ever after, which is the proper way to live. He wrote a poem beginning, Lovely the day, dear is the eye of the dawn. And a thousand merry people learned it after him. But as to Fergus Fionlia, he took to his bed and he stayed there for a year and a day, suffering from blighted affection. And he would have died in the bed, only that Fionn sent him a special pup. And in a week, that young hound became the star of fortune and the very pulse of his heart, so that he got well again. And he also lived happily ever after. And Shine on scale chin, that is the birth of Bran as beautifully retold by 
the wonderful James Stevens. A year and a day, a leap year, says Helena. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Absolutely. Um, yeah, nice little story that. Uh, nice ending, anyway, for all the doggy lovers uh, who are terrified of what might happen. But I kind of had that feeling, kind of had that feeling of inevitability about it, didn't it? It was a little bit predictable, was it not? Like the, the plot that uh, would be, uh, once the dog was given to Fergus, it would soften his heart, you know? Do you know that paleontologists are excavating currently the largest known dinosaur tibia to date? Apparently it's a real shindig. Angel thinks it's a lovely story. I happen to agree. Absolutely. Wholeheartedly. And uh, yeah, I especially agree with uh, Desiree's sentiments. That's it. You've had the affections of a dog. It's very hard not to love them. Such wonderful creatures. So there you go. Uh, one more for the road. No, I had this one last week, didn't I? How do you make a waterbed more bouncy? Add spring water. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't laugh at my own jokes. <laughs> Terrible. Don't forget uh, that oh, we'll hang around for a few minutes. I'm not in a rush to go away or anything, but don't forget. Uh, if you haven't done so already, get your order in for the uh, 2022 Mythical Ireland calendar. I have plenty of them here, but they are leaving the uh, library in, uh, in, in numbers uh, on their way tomorrow. Today, the ones that left are heading around Ireland and Northern Ireland. Tomorrow, around the world, Britain, uh, Scotland, Wales, uh, England, Europe, different parts of Europe. A few to Canada, a load to North America, the United States, and a few even to Australia. <laughs> if you don't laugh at your own jokes, no one will. No, that's not how I experience it here in the house. When I tell a, a one of my dad jokes at, for instance, the dinner table, you know, you can you can actually hear the tumbleweed blowing across the kitchen. It's like literally people are just sitting there going. I don't know who he is. <laughs> ah, signed calendars. Uh, I can sign them if people want. I'm not signing them generally. Um, a few people have asked me to sign them. So if you're ordering one, don't forget to, to say that. Or send me an email or whatever. Oh, crikey. I'm very sorry. I'm tired now. That's from the uh, the long day. But sure, look, it's all in the name of uh, good stories and even better jokes, right? Uh, hey, sign mine, says Jason. Great. Maybe, uh, Jason, if you send me an email to mythicalireland at gmail.com uh, and uh, just tell me your whole name and uh, when you made the order and I'll make sure if it hasn't been sent already, which hopefully it hasn't. At the same time tomorrow, Anthony says, Daisy, <laughs> nice try. Uh, uh, maybe, who knows? Maybe, maybe I'll just come on and tell dad jokes for half an hour or maybe we'll just have a, a, a conversation. Oh, I'm definitely going to, yeah, definitely going to fall asleep before I hit the uh, disconnect button. Desiree wants to know, how did the Scottish dog feel when he saw a monster? I don't know. How did the Scottish dog feel when he saw a monster? <laughs> Terrier fight. <laughs> uh, yes, that's that's pretty good. I mean, that's right up there with, with mine. I mean, it may actually be a standard above mine. It's it's not bad at all. It's got to laugh anyway. I'm, Sure, other people are laughing as well. Lovely fairy tale and well told, Anthony. Me thinks that after your weekend, you need some sleep. Anybody know anything that could help me with that? Like in terms of sleep, I'm thinking magic potion. I'm thinking twelve year old uh, vintage uh, red breast would be nice, wouldn't it? Is there anything in the in terms of of of, of scotch that uh, people think is better than, for instance? Uh, uh, Redbreast 12, or for instance, Tullamore Dew. 
but I may have a nightcap just to help me nod off to go into the, the land of sleep. Anyway, I'm glad you all enjoyed yourselves. I was a bit giddy today. I do. I know. I know. I probably had too many Smarties today or something like that. Too many jellies, you know. I, I blame the parents, you know. <laughs> I was told years ago when I was 30, a few years ago when I was 40, I was told if you didn't grow up when you were 40, you didn't have to. Oh, Bushmills, 21-year-old. Oh, I've had Bushmills and I've had the black, what's it called? The black labeled Bushmills, the black something or other. Um, which is very nice. Um, mm, yes. Oh, CBD for a good sleep. Well, you may not, I'm willing to try it. You know, if it works, definitely. I'm game. Absolutely. If it works and it's legal. Um, Desiree says she has plenty of dog jokes. I'm sure you have. And uh, I can't wait to hear them. Uh, Mavanway says the Pandora's box of jokes has been opened. And I was going to say the thing about those is that, you know, it gets to a stage where you just run out of jokes, but actually, no, there's thousands of them. Unfortunately, we could be there for, well, maybe we'll replace reading myths and legends with telling jokes, you know? Um, maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, don't forget also that Mythical Ireland, New Light on the Ancient Past is, uh, Currently gone for print, the new edition, the new revised expanded edition, which will not look like this because it has an entirely redesigned cover. And uh, as I said yesterday, 20,000 words of extra material. You can also pre-order that on uh, mythicalireland.com in gallery and shop and in the drop down menu. Instead of going to calendars for your calendar, go to book for your books. And go into my books and it's there you'll see it it's pre-order revised and expanded edition of mythical ireland and also if you want to read my next book as i write it become a patron at the uh, uh i should know this bronze age level and above just give me one moment i'll tell you now uh i'm pretty sure it's the bronze age level and above if you become a patron at the bronze age level you will uh, shortly uh, begin to uh, to be able to read my forthcoming book, which is being written at the moment. Uh, yes, it's the Bronze Age uh, reward level, which is ten dollars a month and above. So above that is the Iron Age level, the Early Medieval level, and the Silver and Gold levels. Uh, so uh, literally, you'll get to read the book as it's written, the draft, the first draft, the first draft of history. Oh, Lord, thousands, says Mavanwe. Yes, that's the problem, you know. Good sport and great fun, says Tom. Very much enjoyed that broadcast. Stay safe, my friends, until the next time. I hope you had a productive evening in the uh, Forge, Tom. Uh, Jason has emailed me. Brilliant. I will look forward to that. Now, when I finish the episode, Tullamore Jew gets Mandy's thumbs up. If it gets Mandy's thumbs up, it gets my thumbs up, because I think Mandy is quite a connoisseur. So there you go. Uh, yeah, brilliant. Chamomile tea. Actually, I do drink chamomile tea, so maybe that's an alternative, you know. Helena says, good night. Angel Barboni, good night. All of you, thank you for joining us today. What a fun time we had, I hope. And uh, in the meantime, uh, as I say, uh, don't forget to uh, do your orders and become a patron. If you don't want to do any of that, just come back next time. Brilliant. All that remains for me to say at this moment is uh, Shalom Liv, as Sirsha says, Ihoa Agus Kolosov. That's how you spell those, by the way. Uh, and uh, Slong of Fole, bye for now. You're very welcome, Gillian. Nice for you to pop in. I love the dog stories. Yes, we'll have to have more dog stories. Go gently, says Mandy. And. Uh, Tarini Pendleton says, thanks. Thank you, Tarini. And we'll see you all very, very soon, hopefully. I'm Anthony Murphy. This is Mythical Ireland. This is Live Irish Myths. That was episode number 159. Next is 160. We'll do more reading from James Stevens. In the meantime, the only thing that remains for me to say is, in the words of John Main of County Mayo, Togo Boge, which means, as you know, take it easy. Au revoir. Or is it abiento? Which one means bye, but we'll see you again. Uh, 
Ihua Agus Banakti Liv Golair. Brilliant. So party at 200, says Mavana. Do we have to wait that long? Oh, with the way the numbers are going, it doesn't look like we're going to be having any physical get togethers for the time being. Numbers are way up here. Anyway, look, let's not get depressed. Let's keep meeting online and doing these funny live streams. Thank you from Georgia, says Jules. Later, alligator. 7 3, as we say in ham radio terminology. It's long ago. It is time for Mythical Ireland to QRT for the moment. QSY. Togabuggy. 